Okay, lecture 32 talks about the NRCS uh, synthetic unit hydrograph. And we're going to go back over the unit hydrograph definitions and we're going to introduce and explain the synthetic unit hydrograph method uh, of NRCS, also known as SES. Remember, uh, SES stands for the Soil Conservation Service. They're part of United States Department of Agriculture. Oh, probably 25 years ago, they changed their name to NRCS, which is the Natural Resources Conservation Service. So you'll see these used interchangeably when you describe some of their methods. So again, uh, a synthetic unit hydrograph, only a small number of streams are gauged. And uh, our previous methods for determining the unit hydrograph require stream flow data and, run and rainfall. So if we don't have that where we can uh, create our own unit hydrograph from data, we have to do things synthetically. And you have to develop these synthetic unit hydrographs based on various formulations. Uh, we've covered Schneider and now we're covering SCS. And these are based on basin characteristics, characteristics of the basin. Uh, What's the length of the basin, the slope of the basin, those kinds of things. There's also additional kinds of unit hydrograph techniques. One, the Clark is based on watershed storage. And then there's a technique uh, where you transpose uh, a unit hydrograph from a gauge basin to an ungauged basin. Some definitions, time to peak. That's the time from the beginning of rainfall. Here in this, to the time of the peak, that's some T sub p usually. Basin lag is the time from the centroid of excess rain, which would be the centroid would be the middle part to the peak. That's a basin lag. Sometimes that's also uh, abbreviated T sub p, sometimes T sub l. There's also lag time. That's the time of, from the centroid of rainfall excess to peak. Again, those basin lag and lag time sometimes used interchangeably. There's time of concentration, T sub c, which is the time of flow from the farthest point in the watershed to the outlet. And then there's the base time, which the base time is the base amount of time it takes to get the watershed or get the, uh, to, from the hydrograph when it first uh, responds to the rainfall, the excess rainfall to when it stops responding, that's the base time. And there's a recession time, which is from the time of peak to the end of the hydrograph, the unit you know, hydrograph. And then there's, a, again, the effective duration, which is the time it takes to get that one inch of excess rainfall on, on the watershed. So the NRCS uh, unit hydrograph method, you can pay it, uh, you know, you can ignore the, the cumulative hydrograph here. And let's just pay attention to the actual unit hydrographs. You have a triangular version here. And you have the curvilinear. And you can, um, both of these are dimensionless. You'll notice that the units are in Q over Q sub P where Q sub P is the peak and the Q is the values in between, you know, anywhere there. So anywhere between um, uh, be below the peak. And so you'll notice at the peak, Q over Q sub P is one and it's below that anywhere else. You'll also notice that the time is a relationship between uh, time over time sub peak, uh, T sub P at the peak. And so you can notice that ratio is equal to one at the peak. If we've got the triangular, there's some equations for that. You can see that it's two point, uh, I think this is 2.67 is the maximum starts out at zero. And then you've got a value for the T over T sub P and you can, uh, you can lay out from those three points, you can lay out that triangular unit hydrograph. If it's, um, if it's curvilinear, you have to go to a table and pick out these uh, values. You will notice, notice it goes all the way to five times the uh, time to peak. This is the table for the uh, curvilinear values. And so once again, you can, you can ignore the cumulative and just pay attention to these first two columns. And you've got T over T sub P all the way up to the peak here at one, and then it goes to five, and you can see the values of the Q over Q sub P. So the key parameters, again, are the 
time to peak and the peak flow rate. And um, if you think about this in terms of Schneider versus uh, versus uh, the NRCS unit hydrograph, uh, the units on this Q sub P for the NRCS are in cubic feet per second. Whereas th if this had been the Schneider, we would be talking about units uh, per square mile if we used little Q sub P. Uh, I'm going to stay consistent with uh, with May's textbook, which some of you may have have or have seen, uh, to keep uh, keep this this straight. So my time to peak uh, is going to be 0.67 times the time of concentration. So two thirds the time of concentration will be the value for time to peak. So I'm going to have to figure out what is the time of concentration of my watershed. And again, that is going to be the time it takes to get from the hydraulically most remote point in the watershed to the outlet. And then the effective duration is this 0 0.133 times the time of concentration. So again, the question is, how do we compute this time of concentration? So we've got a couple different ways to do that here. We've got uh, something called the lag methods and we've got upland or velocity methods. There are a number of other ways. These are the two that you're gonna be responsible for. I, in fact, I put together a table, or I have a table uh, in the lecture that you can see, actually, I think it's a handout in, uh, in Canvas that you can see the various other types of methods. So if I use the lag method, the time of concentration T sub C is equal to the hydraulic length of the watershed, that's in L, or I'm sorry, that's in feet, and that is uh, signified by L and multiplied, you know, to take it to the 0 0.8 power. And then you multiply that by the uh, potential maximum uh, retention. Again, this is curve number hydrology. So that potential maximum retention storage is a thousand divided by the curve number minus 10. You've seen this before in prior lectures. You add that to one and, and uh, take it to the 0 0.7 power. And then you divide that by 1140 times y to the 0 0.5, where this y is the slope in percent. That's slope of the watershed. If we, uh, so that's the lag method, that lag equation, you'll see this used. If we use the upland velocity method, we basically look at what is the hydraulic flow length and then what is the velocity of that flow over that length. And what we'll do is we'll break, break it into multiple segments because as we have a watershed, and here's the outlet, let's make this very simple. Let's just say that um, we've got this ephemeral stream here where you don't have water all the time, but you've got some channel. And let's say the rest of this is all grass, you know, big pasture here. Well, the time it takes, let's say that this is the hydraulically most remote point the time it takes to go from here to there, there's a certain length one, uh, that L1 divided by velocity of that section one, that's equal to the time of concentration for that one. So that's only one part of that, right? And so this velocity over grass is gonna to be totally different than if I look at the distance here in the channel, which is L2, that's a totally different type of velocity. This is channel, this is gonna be overland flow. So we're gonna to have to know something about the velocity over the grass area. And then we're gonna to have to down here, we're gonna to have to know something about the velocity through this channel. So this would be L2 over V2 is equal to TC2. And if you look at this total time of concentration, that's going to be TC1 plus TC2. Or as we've, we've said it here, um, we're, we've got the L, I, V, I, and again, these are in seconds, usually the velocity is in feet per second. So we uh, use this conversion here, 3,600 to get it into uh, a time in hours. All right, so how do we get that velocity for various uh, uh, segments? So if it's the stream channel, we're gonna use Manny's equation, right? V is equal to 1.49 over N, R to the two thirds, S, sub f to the one half. And if we don't know what the uh, channel, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, friction slope is, 
we can just assume in this particular case for you know our approximation methods that we're using here, I can just use S of F equal to S of O, just get the slope of the channel because that'll give you a uniform flow approximate value of velocity. And you're also going to have to have know something about the hydraulic radius. So you could assume, well, how about bank full or half bank full and just run a sensitivity analysis. What's the difference in velocity if it's half bank full versus if it's full you know, a bank full uh, channel and kind of see what the differences are and, and maybe approximate somewhere in the middle. So that would give you a velocity of, of the main channel. If I had some other type of, you know, overflow like a grass field, you can see this, uh, this uh, uh, graph here gives you various types of land use. Here's forest with heavy ground litter. Uh, we had um, grass, uh, I'm sorry, uh, here we go, short grain pasture. That would be something like the field I had uh, in my example. And you'll notice it's got the slope in percent. So if I had a 4% slope and I went over to, the, to here, then I would basically be estimating somewhere around like 1.4 feet per second for the overland flow velocity there. And so if I had my L divided by that velocity, that would give me a time to uh, go through um, the overland flow there. Now, as I promised, there's other kinds of uh, formulas for time of concentration. Uh, we've covered this uh, lag equation and then the upland velocity uh, method uh, where we've got the various uh, uh, you know, segments uh, that we would calculate the times. But there's also a different, uh, there's other kinds of equations. This is FAA developed for airfield drainage. You've got others that here's the California culverts. Uh, Kerpich developed that. So you can use various other equations. It's just these two are the ones that you're responsible for for the class. Now, let's talk about the time to base. Uh, if for a triangular, that time to base is going to be 2.67 times T to P. And again, that time to base, if I look at the triangular unit hydrograph, that is, this is zero, this is one. Again, this is T over T sub P, remember. And then I've got uh, two, and let's move this over a little bit further. And I've got this as two, and this is 2.67. If it's curvilinear, you remember it goes something like this, it comes out all the way out here to the value of five. And so that's what we're talking about there for our time to base. Again, that T sub P is going to be equal to Two thirds the value of the time of concentration. All right. So the peak discharge is going to be equal to, uh, in English units, 484, which is conversion, times the area, which is going to be in square miles, and the time to peak, which is going to be in hours. You got that from two, let's see, uh, 0 0.67 times time to peak, right? I'm sorry, time of concentration. Let's go back here and just check. Yeah, 0 0.67 times the time of concentration. So let me erase that. Time of concentration. So you have everything you need to know to be able to calculate that Q sub P. Again, if you're an SI, you've got slightly different equation based on the conversion and the fact that you've got this in kilometers squared. All right, so this is just a summary slide that kind of tells you again the steps. You can go through this on your own. Keep, uh, make sure you've got it straight. And here's some step-by-step -step instructions. Uh, first thing you're gonna do is compute the T sub C, and then you get the T sub P from that and the effective duration. Then you're gonna get your time to base, and then you're going to uh, calculate your uh, dimensionless ratios. Uh, uh, based on that, you got the Q sub P there, and you're ready to go.